how to invert the colours of an image in Affinity Photo using the Procedural Texture filter. Got an image here. First thing to do, go to the Filters, Colours and Procedural Texture. Your panel. Create some equations. Click the plus and you'll get a red channel. That's the first equation. But click it twice, twice more. So you've got three channels now, the red, the green, and the blue. In the first one, change the zero to one minus R. The green channel, change it to one minus G. And then one minus B for the blue channel. At this point, you can save it. Just go over to the right side and there's a presets option, on the right side at the top, if you wish. But you can make some variations of that to make it really unusual color schemes. So what you can do, you can go one minus R times 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, whatever, or maybe a minus value, up to you. You can do exactly the same in the green channel. And you can put one minus bracket, then G times 0 0.5, 0 0.6, etc. bracket. And the equation is not correct. What will happen? It will just not work. You'll notice that straight away. After making mistakes when I type it, so it suddenly goes to, you'll end up seeing no effect at all. Then one minus bracket then B times a value, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, bracket. And of course you don't have to use one minus B or one minus R, you can always just set the blue channel just to B, the value it is. And just use the red and the green, or of course green and the blue. Also you can do things like, one minus bracket R plus G plus B bracket. And then you can vary the R as well. So you don't have to have R. You can just have R times 0.2, R times 0.3, or maybe times G, 0.3 times G, or minus 0.3, etc. So a whole range of different variations there as well. And you can do the same in the green and the blue channels as well, if you wish. And of course, you don't have to have R and G and B. You could just have R and G. You could also have R, G and B plus B again later, maybe with a slight variation. So you could add multiple additional values up to you for your equation. And also, what you can also do, you can use custom inputs. So instead of using one at the start, you don't have to use just one. You could use two or another value, but you can make it as a custom input. So you can create some custom inputs, click in the R, make it A, B, and the C, the custom inputs. And that's just by clicking the R right at the bottom. You could, of course, use integers, etc. I like reals. And then change the values. I'm using one, one, and one for the A, B, and C. So now make it A minus, and then B minus, and then C minus for the blue channel. And of course, you can then make some variations on the R plus G plus, etc. as well. And then you can just vary the custom inputs as well. So you can go up and down. But you can also, instead of using one, two, three, four, etc., you can manually type in 0 0.2, 0 0.3, minus 0 0.3, minus 0 0.6, etc. Or minus 0.28 for the A. And you can leave the others as one, or you can vary those as well. Again, you will then get different results in the preview. And at any point, if you create something, you think, wow, I really like that setting. What you can do, you can go up to the top, top right, and create a preset. Once you've created that preset, what you can also do 
is you can then vary the A, B, and C, and you can then set up a custom input preset, maybe three or four, 10, 15 of those different color effects. So you can have, I'm just going to go back to a more basic there, A minus R, B minus G, and C minus B. But again, you don't have to use all the channels. I could get rid of by just going on to the right side and getting rid of it. Just closing it down, that equation. But you can also make additional variations of, so you can have a minus D times R, where D is a custom input, which I haven't created at the moment. And you can see what happens when you haven't got correct equation, the original image appears. Now I'm just going to go to the R's and click that three times to create those custom inputs. Now they're there, what I'm going to do, see at the moment, by default, they're set to zero. Sometimes it's useful that it's set to zero. Sometimes it would be nice to have it as one. But the way it works, it sets it to zero as the default value. So you've got six inputs now. So you can vary in numerous ways just by changing those things. And of course, you, what you could do is you could have A minus D times R. You could have brackets around the D times R and you could then vary plus a G and a B, maybe with custom inputs as well. So you could create some more custom inputs for that. So you could make some real quite complex equations that you can use to vary the custom inputs and the equations. And you can go down to the custom inputs and you can enter 0 0.5, 0 0.3, just to vary the amount of red, amount of green, the amount of blue in that image. And of course, you've still got that inverted image there. Or maybe a more extreme pink and green effect. And you can continue to vary. The only way, let's like say, is you have to manually enter it if you want something like that. As soon as you click the up and down, it will put it to one, two, three, etc. And the equations you can still continue to modify. Don't have to use just A times R, whatever, or D times R. That's my bad eyesight. You can put OSC sin bracket around those D times R. You can vary that, and of course, what you can do then you can. There's lots of other functions as well, as well as additional variables in those functions. At this point, I'm just creating a basic OSC sin bracket around those. But you could put comma five, comma six, whatever. You can find out more about functions that you can use, and some functions will work well in this case. Some will work will do nothing, or no no use whatsoever. You can find a whole range of functions in the Affinity Photo Help, as well as video tutorials on the Graphic Extra channels about equations. I've created lots of equations with different functions. Now, don't ask me about mathematics of the functions. Certain people who are heavily into math will know about those sort of things. I don't. You can keep varying these equations in numerous, numerous ways. Or you can put it just basic, back to the basic one minus R, if you just want to go with that. And of course, the custom inputs, you can delete if you, you don't want to use them, but you can just leave them there. It's perfectly okay. And you can always just go to the right side at any point, any of the equations you've created, you can then go and create a preset. As well as then, once you've done that, you can create custom input presets. So just run the function and just apply it. One trouble with filters, that's it. Once you go back into the equation, if you go back into the filter, not so much use. You can reapply, of course. Best way, probably all the ways to do it, is to go to the layer menu and new layer filter layer and procedural texture. Personally, I prefer that. If you've stored a preset, you can use it in the filters and you can also use it in the live filter layers as well. The filter option 
doesn't allow for blending modes. You can always get around that by using, maybe applying the filter to a layer and then using blending modes in the layers panel. But you can also go to the layer menu and use the fade command after you've applied the filter. With the red channel, green channel, and blue channel, you can put one minus R, one minus G, one minus B again. You can do as before, you can use the one minus R times 0 0.3 or one minus R times A or A minus R times D. You can do all those things as well. But what you can also do, of course, with the live filter layer, is you can go to the bottom and you've got blending modes. And you can run through those, so use lighten instead, or overlay, or difference. And of course you can still go up to the top and you can still then put your one minus R times 0 0.3 and vary that. Not cast in stone in any way. So again, one minus G times 0 0.4. Again, you can go down to the blending mode, or as well as the, as the blending mode, the opacity. I always often forget the opacity, but you can modify that as well. So now one minus B times 1.2 or whatever. And of course you can do all the other variations or just use B to create a very intense yellow, yellow, dark and multiply. It's quite a weird pink sky there. Or difference. Or lighter. Up to you. You can close the panel at any point. But the one thing with layers, of course, you can, these live filter layers, what you can do, you can go back to them. You can see with the layers panel, just double click on that white box there, bring up the panel again, and then modify the the equations, as well as the, if you add some custom inputs, of course, you can modify those as well. And of course, what you can also do, you've got the option for macros. You can save this all into a macro. So you've got your macro, so you can create this amazing filter effect and then have a macro for it as well. Hope you found this of interest. Please subscribe to Graphic Extra's channel. Always add new tutorials about Fancy Photo, Photoshop, Illustrator, and many others. Please add some comments, always appreciated. A dislike or a like. Thank you much.